It was supposed to be just another relaxing day at the office, reading some quality literature. <sighs> when this case arrived at my desk. Another curious homework assignment on r slash mathematics. Any idea? Either I'm getting very old, or teachers don't know anymore what they're talking about. I tried to take a look, but quickly realized that I'm too old to read any of this. It's way too small. One more trip to Staples later, and I've got it at a legible size, so we can start to investigate. So, what's going on here? Well, this is a Dutch math assignment for a 10 year old, and you would think, since the teacher has already graded it, that there shouldn't be all that much confusion to be found. But in fact, it's the teacher's grading which makes this problem so puzzling, because there are solutions which appear wrong, but are marked correct. So maybe there's a little more going on than simple multiplication that we don't realize, or maybe the teacher is just just incorrect. Let's take a look and you can tell me what you think. By the way, the first problem, just for the sake of completeness, is asking what operation is shown and what is the result. It looks like the first operation is 3 fifths plus 3 fifths, which of course is 6 fifths. And the second diagram shows the operation 2 eighths times 3. With that settled, let's move into the weird stuff. The first problem is 5 times 3 fourths, and that's easy, that's just 15 fourths. But then we see the student rewrite it with an equal sign as 3 over 3. Of course, this is not true, 15 over 4 is not equal to 3 over 3. But curiously, the teacher has marked it correct. That's a green check. If you trust the teacher and not me, let me just use my trusty TI-108 to prove to you that 15 fourths is not the same as three over three. 15 divided by four, what's that? It's 3.75. However, three divided by three is one. Clearly, this is not correct, but it's been marked as such. And it doesn't appear to get better. The very next problem is four times two over nine. The student writes eight over nine, says it equals one over one, and the teacher marks that correct. Of course, eight over nine is not one over one, so what's correct here? You might also wonder, are these really ones? They're a little strange looking. Yes, they are in fact ones. We can find elsewhere on this worksheet a verifiable seven, and you can see that the student crosses his sevens. So indeed, these are ones. Of course, not that it would matter. Seven over seven is just as wrong. Well, maybe not. Maybe we have no idea what's going on here. Well, the next problem might begin to shed some light. Five times one half is five over two. That's correct. But the student then writes that it equals two over one. Now the teacher doesn't like this. The teacher has written this green swap arrow suggesting that the correct answer is not two over one, but in fact, one over two. So the teacher's saying, no, 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 five over two is not two over one. It's in fact, one over two. Well, if you look at the next problem, you may begin to notice a pattern. The next problem is one half times nine, which is very similar to this one. The student writes nine over two, which is correct. Then the student writes that nine over two equals four over four, and one half is written next to it. The teachers crossed out four over four and marked one half correct. At this point, you may begin to think, perhaps they're not actually supposed to be doing the product as written, but maybe the objective here is to write the fractional part of the answer. For example, five times one half isn't one half, but one half is the fractional part that remains from this product. Same thing with one half times nine. That's not a half, but that is the fractional part that's left over. After all, once you start to realize things seem a little fishy around here, 
you may notice that the poster has actually completely covered up the instructions for this problem. They ostensibly want us to crack the case, but they've deliberately withheld critical information. What does it say? Does it say to calculate the product, or does it say to just write whatever number you feel like? Who knows? Of course, our fellow detectives were quick to sniff him out on this. Maybe don't cover up the instructions so we can know what it's asking. And the OP is bizarrely secretive. It just says to calculate, and then he claims claims that he cannot add a picture here without the white box. So his claim is that it's not possible to upload a photo to Reddit without these white boxes that obscure critical information. Someone else presses him also and asks, what's the header that the boxes hide? The OP says the header just says calculate. I did not hide them. I tried to highlight the exercises I do not understand. Then it does not just say calculate. It's too long for that. I speak Dutch. I want to know if the extra instruction is just simplify or simplify in a certain way. And then it goes into Dutch. I don't know what this says. But as strongly as I felt about this initially, because it just seemed so ridiculous, I must formally rescind my down vote. The OP wanted to put the boxes there just to draw our attention to the part he didn't understand. And he probably didn't think twice about covering up the instructions because they probably didn't say anything significant. Probably just said calculate the product and simplify or something similarly generic. When we go down to the next section, our working hypothesis that that perhaps the teacher is just looking for fractional parts seems to be supported. This problem is done in a completely standard way, arriving at a correct answer of three tenths. Perhaps because the whole answer is just a fractional part, it has been marked correct. Then we have six times seven tenths, which is 42 tenths. The fractional part of that is two tenths, which is the same as the teacher's written answer here of one fifth. But then you look at a question like this, where there is no fractional part and the teacher's written that the correct answer is 150. Worse still, you go to this question which also has no fractional part. It looks like the student has written 12 over zero and the teacher again has marked this correct. I know this is almost completely illegible, but I'm telling you it says 12 over zero, okay? I've been sipping coffee and staring painstakingly at this document all night here in the office. It's 12 over zero and it's marked correct. What's going on? Well, 12 is the number of whole parts. Three fifths times 20, that's 12. And zero is the number of fractional parts. Maybe this is just an odd way of expressing an answer like this. In fact, we kind of see this in some other solutions as well. This first solution actually made no sense, even under the view of just writing a fractional part, because of course the student wrote three over three. That's a whole. But what if we view it kind of like this answer, the holes on top and the remainder, so to speak, on bottom? Well, maybe then this is representing the fact that there are three holes because four goes into 15 three times and three parts left over because four times three is 12. That leaves three more fourths to make up 15 total. That feels a little bit plausible, but of course that representation of an answer is not a very good one. Three over three could represent three holes and three fourths, but three over three could also represent three holes and three tenths. Those are completely different numbers, which if this is the method, they would look exactly the same, three over three. But then again, it is in Dutch. So maybe there are just some odd conventions beyond my understanding here. Ornery Letterhead says, I'm a mathematics teacher here in America. This is correct. Keep in mind, this mathematics lesson looks like it may be in Dutch. Therefore, the style of the answers may be slightly different than American mathematics. This is kind of weird since it seems like a response geared towards an American, but as far as I know, OP is Dutch and is the recipient or parent of the recipient of this assignment. He says, but would you mind explaining how this is correct? 
I mean, look at each of them. Five times three fourths, the answer should be 15 fourths, then simplified is three plus three fourths. The teacher is validated three over three. Same thing with other problems. Ornery letterhead says to check out this link, seeing how in different parts of the world, mathematics appears differently. I looked at this link, I didn't see anything compellingly relevant to the discussion. It's just about Dutch fractions. Just a very strange comment here because ornery letterhead suggests certainty. This is correct, but their justification is just ignorance that they're in America and since this is in Dutch the style of answers might be slightly different so it's correct I just don't buy it and of course even though thinking the answer is whole parts over fraction parts makes sense for some of these it doesn't make sense for most of them like going back to one half times nine we might expect that to be written as four over one four holes with one half left over. But the teacher validated an answer of one half and crossed out that four over four. I mean, I just don't know what any of this means. A handful of the problems are just correct with no questions whatsoever. The answers that are just fractions or just holes are mostly correct, although this one is just a whole part, but it's written as 12 over zero, so I'm confused there too. Some of the problems, it makes sense that we're just seeing a fractional part and that's validated and we can kind of see what's going on there. However, other problems, I, I just have no idea. Certainly, it's a country different from mine and so its conventions may seem unusual to me. For example, we have a comma instead of a decimal point, but I fail to see how any conventions like that could justify these answers. It seems to me like the best guess is that the intention of the problem, or at least the teacher, is for the student to just write the remainder, the fractional part once all holes have been ignored. And of course, those of you who know a bit of mathematics know that the idea of focusing just on a remainder is not a crazy one. Indeed, that's the whole idea behind modular congruence. This is one of those ideas in mathematics that opens so many doors for you once you understand it. There's so much other cool stuff you can study. We say, for example, that 9 is congruent to 1 mod 2 because if we divide 9 by 2, we get a remainder of 1. Just like here, how we see that 2 goes into 9 four times, which surely has something to do with this 4 over 4, but the teacher just wants that remainder, that one half that's left over. Similarly, we were thinking about this, showing three holes, because four goes into 15 three times, with three parts left over. In other words, 15 is congruent to three mod four. That's because if we divide 15 by four, we get a remainder of three. Having a basic understanding of this notation, what do you think four is congruent to mod four? Well, if we divide four by four, we get a remainder of zero. So four is actually congruent to zero mod four. Modular congruence is really cool because with modular congruence, instead of having a number line, we think about having a number circle. Indeed, if we're representing numbers mod four, we can think about this circle as having four points on it, zero, one, two, and three. Like we just said, four divided by four has a remainder of zero, so four is just zero mod four, which is why you don't see the number four on this number circle. You can also count along the number circle, just like you could count along a number line to see that 15 is congruent to three mod four. Check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, there we are, right on three. By arriving at zero every time we loop around four units, that's just saying every time four goes into our number, we just ignore that and keep on going. Does four go into 15 once? Yes. Okay, so take four away. Does four go into 15 again? Yes. All right, so take another four away. And on and on until we arrive at three. So maybe the 10 year old's math teacher is just really into number theory or cryptography and wants to get the students into to modular congruence early. Maybe they're the type of teacher that looks for horses. But unfortunately, I'm really just not sure. I'm curious to hear what you think though. Let me know in the comments. 
My final conclusion is that the teacher was looking for fractional parts to be written. There are just too many answers that show us that's what they're looking for. This is the fractional part, which is marked correct. This is saying that it would be correct if they had swapped it around so that it showed the fractional part. This is a fractional part, marked correct. Over and over again, we see holes being ignored and fractional parts being validated. That leaves us to explain bizarre answers like this one and this one and this one that has no fractional part. If the whole goal is to write fractional parts, shouldn't the correct answer here be zero, not the 150 holes? I mean, really, it's baffling to start to consider the complicated set of if-then instructions that the teacher must have given to the students to get answers like this. So I'm thinking the teacher's instructions were something like this. Write only the fractional part. You may write the fractional part as the actual fraction, which it is, or you can write it as the number of parts that are in it divided by that number of parts, like we see here and here. And if there are no fractional parts, so the answer is a whole number, you may either write the whole number or you may write the whole number divided by zero. I think that simple set of instructions fully explains the teacher's marks on this paper. Final note, everyone involved here needs to work on their penmanship. The student, I give a pass because you got plenty of time to fix your penmanship. Right now though, it's small and very hard to read. As for the teacher, what are these check marks? Look at these, these are horrific. They look like logical or symbols. And I mean, the penmanship down here is, it's okay. L look at the one though, does everybody? write their ones like that? I don't know if I could handle visiting the Netherlands if that's what one looks like there. And I feel like if I started writing my ones like that, I would get so many mean, mean comments and they would be well-deserved. Anyway, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. That's all I have to say about this. It's time for me to get back to studying. <sighs> I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut an unsalted table If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you 